Friday Night Flies. Take it away, Scotty. Oh, hi. Welcome, everybody. It's Friday Night Flies. Uh, I'm on Boulder, and we're here at Spud Valley Sporting Goods, 1380 Birch Street, downtown Pemberton. That's where we are. Tying live. It's Friday. Uh, we're brought to you by, am I wearing Pemberton yeah, Fish Finder? Oh, yeah. So. Pemberton Fish Finder right there. That's uh, the guiding company based out of uh, out of Pemberton here that we, that we like to uh, bring people out and show them the ropes and Get them fish. We're still ice fishing, but here we are, fly tying. We're getting ready for the rivers to open. Exciting we, times. We stuck out last week. Yeah, we've been getting out there. We've been definitely getting out there. Uh, the snow is slowly disappearing, so it makes it able to get to the river, and uh, it's not so dangerous because you got that that ice shelf is disappearing. Uh, ice fishing on snowy rivers is dangerous because the water's going underneath, and you never know what'll yeah. happen. But we got volume. Yeah, we're good. I can stop rambling. All right, so. Like I said, we're here, Friday Night Flies. Um, I'm doing a remake of one that I did last time we tied, which was a couple weeks ago, I guess. Um, so I'm doing the triple threat with a trailing hook because we had question and answers open last week. Yep. We have it open again today. And this is what happens when you participate in questions and answers. Last week we had a guy type in as I was tying the fly. Since the tail is so long, wouldn't it be a good idea to do a trailing hook? And uh, lo and behold, here we go. We're doing your suggestion right here. That's the uh, the fruits of your, of your I don't know, what do you call it? <laughs> labor. It's I'm not fruits of your labor. It's fruits of my labor, but uh, that's right on your, your request right there in the comments. And that's what Friday Night Flies is about. You know, we're not, we are pros, but, um, you know, we're not too high and mighty that we can't take suggestions. So that's that's right, 100%. This is, this is a network, you know, it's all about right. everybody coming together in a community. And to, we want to show that we can use Boddington shanks. Hell yeah, we can. We use them all the time. Yeah, but anyhow, I like let's, them. let's see what you got. So there. let's go down and we'll show you the fly here. We're still up. Down. Oh, we're up. I got, I, we're man, we're it's like, like we haven't <laughs> been tying since uh, like <laughs> last month. Yeah, we've been busy ice fishing. <laughs> So here's our our fly. Um, I didn't bring the original with me, but basically the uh, the upper looks the same. We have our you know what? You wiggly know what? legs. You know why you didn't bring the original? Because it, it's, it's gone. No, that's actually on my fly rod. Yeah. And it works really good, so it's, I was surprised. It's, it's not, not in my pouch anymore. I looked. Yeah. But uh, so that's our original. It looked the same, except for now we're doing it on a Waddington shaft, and we've exchanged the cone head for the dumbbell eyes and we put this nice trailing hook on there so if i pop it out there we go so the old the old fly the hook would have been sitting back in here and uh true to the comments of our viewer you know we did miss a few a few fish because of it uh we were getting strikes and they were just nipping at the tail and not committing to the to the body so there we go solution trailing hook fixed we're going to get at this here so we got our 25 millimeter shaft here, or shank. I'm gonna get it in the vise. Let's tighten my vise up a little bit. Yeah, Anvil, if you guys are out there watching, Scotty still needs a new vise. Still needs a new vise, and I would love the new rotary one. Yeah, so would I. Because my 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 vise, I've gotten it working again. I took it all apart and. Grease things up and cleaned it out. I've been using this vice for nine years now. Yeah, it's had a lot of flies, man. Yeah. You can even see like the Ooh. jaw. The jaw is starting. Oh yeah, she's getting it's got some wear spots. She's 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 worn. So we'll get our our shaft shank in there. We're gonna start off by getting some thread on here. I'll do it this way for now. I am gonna have to flip it over afterwards, but. Uh, I'm going to show you what's going on with these shanks. So the back end has a split in it. So you need to get your thread on there and close that, that gap down. And you definitely want to do that nice and secure. And, and then what I like to do is get in the trailing wire. So you can buy specific trailing wire for, for intruders and whatnot. This is what I use, Berkeley Fire Line. So it's a braided line that is, is waxed as well. And it's rigid. And that's... it's rigid. So that's the key. 
Um, so when I get this on my hook, you can see this hook stays. It doesn't just flop over. So this line is a rigid line. And that's the key to your trailing hook. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold over a section here and we're going to get this thing set up. We want this to go in from the top so that the trailing hook line is hanging off the bottom. So if this is facing the right way, this is the top of your fly. Hook's going out the bottom. And then I know this one is a little bit of a long tail. So I'm going to put it about there. I think it's just... Yeah, just a bit, just a smidge longer than your actual shank. So get that length measured up. What I'm going to do is just trap this at the head since my thread is at the head. And so you're going to notice we have a little bit of extended bit here, which I want. Uh, a little long. So we want it to be just short of the length of your shank, feed it through the eye, both pieces, pull it down nice and tight, and fold it underneath. And then this is where I'm going to start wrapping nice and secure and really make sure that trailing oops, wire I must have a little burr on my bobbin. As I can see, my thread is getting all fuzz. But we're going to get this nice and secure, and we're going to wrap this all the way back. Now, if you have head cement, this would be a good opportunity for you to lay down a base layer of head cement. That'll just help extra secure that that trailing shafts because remember when you get a big fish on especially if you're doing steel heads and stuff like that um, all the weights coming off of this on this trailing hook thread or wire so if you have um, head cement put it on the base right now that's when you'd want to be doing it have you got it? nah I've used nail polish too yeah nail polish super glue whatever's going to kind of really secure that in there See? but I got a good I got a good base in there Little gold nail polish. What you got that for, Brad? Well, it's, touching up your tooth? No, it's not so, <laughs> not so much my tooth. It's uh, yeah, I got kids at home, girls. So, but I uh, I like to bring it home every once in a while. Do up my toenails. So what we're gonna do next is get the eye put on there. We're gonna invert our our shaft and we're gonna attach our dumbbells to the bottom so that the fly rides upright. Um, I'm putting this back. If that's right at the head, I'm gonna move it back one eye width away from the nose. I don't want it right up on the hook. And we're going to get this put in with a bunch of cross wraps. Make sure she's lying flat. So you can see there about the distance back. Make sure those are nice and straight. and Get those on nice and secure. What's nice about these Weddington shafts is that you know it's always going to lie flat. All you got to do is adjust it this way, make sure that they're correct. It really helps to keep your fly riding straight instead of on its side. All right, so those eyes are in. Work your thread to the back here. I just remind you for the million viewers tonight that we've got uh, Krishna Nasser open too. All right, so we're going to start building this tail. We're going to start with our rabbit strip. So I'm going to go ahead and get this tied in right at the back, right on top, nice and secure. Well, talking about white uh, rabbit strip. I've got a trail cam at home, and I've been getting a lot of pictures of a pure white rabbit. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Hanging around in so your backyard, is he? So I might have to go out and have a look around for this white rabbit. bunny. Nice. <laughs> After seeing that white rabbit strip you got there, I've got a white rabbit that's hanging around that'll have fur that would knock that one out of the park. 
All right, so now we're going to trim the length. So you can see, here's my trailing hook. My hook's going to be hanging off of that. I'm just going to bring this material up. Make sure you cut in there, because then it's going to overhang and just extend past that hook. So your my hook's going to be sitting right here at the end of that tail. Perfect. All right, next, what we're going to do Hi is... I'm Dr. Ashton. I'm location manager for the movie that's still filming tomorrow called Dead Cold. We're just passing out these filming notices, kind of tell us what's going on. Uh, there's a number down here for my ALM, Greg Choi. If there's okay. any questions, so be in town for a few weeks. All right, so next we're going to build and up a bit of the I'm shaft with the, the guten rod. Awesome. Thank you so, so much. I'm just going to get that tied in. Maybe what I'll do just so that I get a nice <laughs> consistent <laughs> base is we're going to tie it in right at the top here. Behind the eyes, work your thread back. That's where that tail starts. Move your thread back up. So, what movie's being filmed out here? It's cool. actually part of it's going to be filmed in here, which is kind of cool too. Dead cold. Why does it say head cold there? Dead cold traction. <laughs> Yeah, I guess you're going to get to see a little bit of the inside of the store, too. Really? Yeah. That's, yeah, that's cool. Awesome. Yeah, so look forward to that, guys. All right, so we got the Goon Broad right up, almost right behind the eyes. I'm not going right tight to it because I still got some uh, marabou to put in there and the rubber legs, and I got some more rabbit, so I don't want to kind of overload behind the eye too much. But we're bringing up to that area. Alrighty, that's that. Let's just get this shortened up here. Next, we're going to go to our marabou, marabou, caribou, whatever. Haribou. Haribou. Now, let's find a nice strand here. You picked through that one pretty good. Yeah, this one's getting towards the end. There's one. Uh -huh. That's what I'm looking for. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to have to lose some of the stuff towards the back where we're in the middle of the feather. I forget what that's called now. The stem is too thick. So... That's what we're looking at. And we're going to get this tied in. Nice and secure. Bum, 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 bum. Nip off the end. Grab your little squeezer thingies. And depending on what kind of how heavy you want that color to be in there. Um, you know, put more wraps or less wraps or a bigger feather. My pliers just let go of my feather. But I definitely want the green for me. I want it to be just a highlight more than it taking over the whole body. So I got the tag trapped in there. A couple of wraps. This one happened to be a really short feather. It's all right. Get all that stuff out of the way. And then I'm just going to kind of back wrap over there. There we go. Awesome. So if you do this too thick, then there's really no point to the white underneath, actually. So as you saw, I only did about two wraps of that chartreuse really lets the the white of the body still bleed through but it gives you the color that you need to cut through some uh, some of the mercury murky waters that we have around here <laughs> mercury water. all right next we're going to go with our rubber legs we're gonna put one rubber leg on each side so get it in the middle around your thread Get that hair out of the way. There we go. And I'm going to get it 
situated right behind that dumbbell eye. One, two, grab that front one, and when I do the other side here, you'll be able to see what I'm doing. All right, so that's my side down. Here comes your side. So normally, I turn my vise on its side like this so I can just go in through once, but uh, so that you can see, I did a little rigging. I just went around twice, so a couple wraps to get that one in the back. Grab your front one, fold it back over itself, and make sure you trap it in there. And then hold both the rubber legs back and secure everything nice and good. Do one little check, make sure they're both still where you want them. They haven't slid around. I like it. Now I'm going to go back. Am I going back? Nope. One more thing first. Flash a boo. So I'm going to grab a couple strands of this purple pearl flash. How long is this stuff? All right, so I got myself three or four of them. And we're going to do the same thing. Get it trapped underneath our thread around those legs. And I want this to come right on top of my fly. Or wraps, fold it all back, and secure it in. So it's coming right down the back. And then what we can do is we can trim it up so it's just a little bit longer than the rabbit. All right, now we're going back to our rabbit strip, and we're going to make a little collar. So we're going to get this attached right behind the eyeballs. It's in there. I'm going to get my thread to the front. I'm going to go back to my hackle pliers here. You got uh, the flat your fingers. Thank you. So make sure you get everything up and out of the way. And make sure when you're wrapping this in here that you stroke that hair back and out of the way. So we're going to go a couple wraps in behind. We're going to do a little bit around these dumbbell eyeballs. Awesome. Make sure you check the bottom. Get a little bit in front. That fly is bomb proof now. Literally. You need, it needs to be bomb proof for them bolt show. They got big teeth. Yeah, you want some some pretty husky materials. All right, so we got that in. We're going to get rid of this tag. I'm going to secure everything in. And again, I'm just going to pull this rabbit back, and I want to wrap it right back to the front of the eyes. Train. Got everything happening tonight, eh? Yeah, man. All right, to finish off the head of this guy, I've been using this chenille. glow bright chenille. I just peeled a little bit of it back so that it exposes that center core. Tie it right in there. And again, we're going to go to our hackle pliers. Get all that rabbit out of the way. I'm just going to finish off this with a little bit of pink glow bright. Now, if on your own you want to do another little twist, Brad and I were discussing that this time of year we're anticipating the salmon fry all coming out and uh, changing up this pink glow, glow bright for some gold material would uh, be the next improvement to make on this fly because the salmon fry have 
very large gold eyes. That's their prominent feature. So if you put a gold golden head on this, like the original pattern we used, gold cone head, um, that would uh, that would definitely not hurt this fly one bit. I like the pink. It's been working. Get a little whip finish in there. And that's it. That's your fly from me on this a Friday night. I guess the only thing left to do is to add uh, the hook in there. Yep. <laughs> yeah. you? Don't, forget the, the Don't hook. forget the hook. Everybody's like, well, how the hell are you catching fish like that? Yeah, show them how to put that thing on there. Remember, you're, you're in focus at the vice. So. Yeah, so I'm going to try and do this in the front. I'm just going to get it organized. So we have our hook here. So it's a size 2 octopus hook. And you can, what's nice about these is you can have it riding down or you can have it, have it riding up and you can change it midstream. You want it riding up though or you'd be hooking bottom like crazy. Well, that's what I was going to say. It depends on where you're fishing in the water column. If you're bouncing it near the bottom, then get that hook pointed up. So what we're going to do is I'm going to feed this loop through the eye of the hook. Can you still see it? Yeah. All right, I'll try and uh, do it this way now. So this hook is now pointed towards the top of the fly. I'm going to separate that uh, trailing wire that we have, and we're going to pull the whole thing up and over the hook. Grab your hook and pull it straight. So it's kind of doing like a loop-to-loop -loop connection that you would do on your fly line. And... Uh, Give it a nice little pull so it stays snug. Oh, I twisted it. There we go. So now that hook point is riding up. So now you can get this thing right down on the bottom and drag it along that bottom. And when you first get it on there, it takes a little bit of, yeah. of manipulation to get that trailing wire set where you want it. Man, that looks really good, Scott. So that's that. I mean, if uh, there's a lot of noise in the background tonight, we got uh, lucky. Sheridan was doing his cash out, and the train was going by, and there's people coming in, dropping us off, movie invitations, and this and that. So. <laughs> it's all right. We made it through there. Yeah, and uh, we'd like to thank all the viewers in attendance tonight. We had a good audience tonight, and we're appreciative of it. And yeah. So. If you guys like to fly, share it with your friends, tie a few yourself, and then show us the pictures of the fish you're catching with these things. That's what we would like. That's some it. picture of, of some fish that you've been catching with the Friday Night Flies. Yeah, we've got it open on uh, Facebook. So if you uh, Facebook Friday Night Flies, um, you can post it on our wall there. We've got a few friends that uh, post pictures of their ties and so on and so on, and we share recipes there too. So join us on Facebook as well. Yep. And to catch what we tied last week, FridayNightFly.com. It's all there. Right on. You covered the basis. I like it. Oh, well, yeah. I got to get in there sometime. I like it. I like it. So it's out of focus the way it is right now. Probably. <laughs> there, that's better. Anyhow, we're going to go back up top. You can sign out. Yeah, let's go up here. So thanks for watching. Like Brad said, it's Friday Night Flies. Check us out on FridayNightFlies.com. And I believe we will be right back because Scotty Holmes is in the building and he's going to be showing you a spiky squirrel caddis. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Exciting. It's a nice looking Getting part. ready for summer. I think Scotty's dreaming about uh, some summer weather. Anyways, join us again in a couple minutes. We'll be right back. Stay tuned.